Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Let's do Greece. Hi, guys. Uh, my name's Connor, if you're new. Uh, original link to the video, top of the description. Right below that, link to the Discord, where they always are. Would love to have you. If you want to click on it, send it right over there. Let's go. Geography Now, Greece. I love this channel. I cannot uh, overstate that enough. Preemptive like. Let's go. This guy's great. Mm. You're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're the one that I want. You get my reference, right? You get it. I'm so clever, right? Do you get my reference? I do. From the Grease musical. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. So much of everything you see today has some kind of correlation to Greece. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Yeah, let's find out how it all went down. <laughs> So let's just jump into it. Greece is located in the southernmost part of the Balkan Peninsula that stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population live. Sorry, this is the greatest geographic feature I've ever seen. It looks like a trident, like this peninsula right here. Like it looks like a map a piece you would put in like a fantasy video game. Like it's just too perfectly cool looking. Sorry. Now, despite the administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions. Thrace, Macedonia, not to be confused with this place that we Love already talked way. about, Thessaly, Epirus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world. I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after Japan. And at any given point in Greece, you are no more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over 2,000 islands, only about 220 of which are so they have more merchant fleets than the U.S. and China? That's crazy. Five miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. I mean, that uh, Greece okay. has over 2,000 islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000 extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Even the ones that are like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey in the Aegean are Imbros, or Kanachale, and Tenedos, or Bolzjada. Now, keep in mind, the Peloponnesian question, Peninsula question, is question, not in... Question, question, question. Isn't there some beef between Greece and Turkey over like what islands is is whose? Anachale and Tenedos or Botsjada. Now keep in mind the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island; it's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city of Corinth, which has a huge canal going through it. After independence from the Ottoman times, Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imiya or Kardak Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, it's that peninsula awesome. is called Halkidiki and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of only about 2,000, Mount Athos or Holy Mountain is interesting because it's an isolated monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted. Oh, guys, um... Is Russia the only country that follows the Orthodox Christian sect? You know how like there's there's or, there's like Eastern Orthodox and then there's like Catholic and then all of the denominations of Catholicism. Um, or is like Greek Greece and maybe like Bulgaria, Romania are are, are they more Catholic or more Eastern Orthodox? You're completely run by monks and priests. They look a bit Eastern Orthodox. Okay. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted. You have to have a special permit and you have to be a dude. No women allowed. Although historically, some women I'm have either dude. accidentally or intentionally got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest cities are of course, got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up. 
Okay, that's a different... Okay, yeah. As a man and snuck in. The three largest cities are, of course, Athens, the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Skyros and Hydra are kind of like the quiet islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Caria once tried to become its own country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculous- Ooh, I would love to try octopus because squid is delicious. So octopus, I'm guessing, must be pretty good. Are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculously picturesque cliffside white marble villas. And Patmos, the incredibly significant religious site in which Jesus' disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation. Speaking of which, Greece has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world. Only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey oh, and Mexico in it. terms of overall sites. Now, we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot. Like France, more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year. Now, we all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon, but other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monasteries, the Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of Delphi, St. Theodora's Chapel with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence of roots, the sculpted face on the shore of Nisi, the Chios former leper colony buildings, the Palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you- The Isle- Guys, I'm from Rhode Island, and you guys have Isle of Rhodes. Huh? Kind of cool. No, just me. Okay. If you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, we got to get down to the foundations of the country, the land. Now, there's an old Greek saying, when God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. I, I kind of paraphrase that a little bit. Don't quote me on it. Too late. It's a quote now. Now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't exactly score high on the soil performance index, and overland transportation has always been an issue. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. And wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting- I can't job. believe you spent so much money living in his people. The on the West Bank. Bank. I don't care about the West, the West Bank. Bank. Talk about me. Talk about the- First of all, the country's about 80- Palestine, uh, Israel, Palestine, I just don't know enough about the conflicts over there to really just have an opinion. I'll just look like an idiot. Mountain is on both the mainland Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland, the Pindus in the west and the Rhodopes in the northeast, Macedonia and Thrace regions. Right around the area where Thessaly meets Macedonia, you find Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, notable for being the uh, legendary Zeus. home of the ancient Greek gods. Now, with the exception of small boats and canoes, almost all the rivers in Greece are non-navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest river, Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake can be found in I don't like the monster claw. It, it's the trident. It sounds so much cooler. In the South Central Greek region. Beautiful, right? Well, it yeah. comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies on two major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. In fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that all whenever I think of earthquakes, I think of Japan. Why? I don't know why. It's just like, it's like, say a country that comes to your mind, earthquake, Japan. I, I just, I, I always think of Japan. But yeah, I, I, yeah, oh my God, there was a terrible earthquake recently in Turkey and Syria. Anyone who was affected by that, I am very sorry for that. The death toll keeps climbing and it is horrific. And just heart goes out to anyone, anyone Turkish, in that area, I, I hope you're. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're doing as okay as you can be. Okay. Love you guys. Although flies on two major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea. Or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about 250 days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece. And they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, if you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Popular dishes like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic Greek salad, pita with gyros, the real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff. Oh, so good, so good, so good. Um, I had one with lamb, I think, in it, and it was my favorite one. I've never had lamb. I think it was lamb. I, I don't know. It was in New York City. 
And is it gyro, 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 gyro? I forget what it is, but... Um, the tzatziki sauce reminded me of mayonnaise, and I hate mayonnaise, but I got it on, and it was good. So, tzatziki sauce, very good. I don't know if that's a Greek thing, or a Turkish, or a whatever. But um, it was lamb, and a bunch of veggies and stuff, and the tzatziki sauce, and a nice bread thing. And it was so good. And there's nowhere around me now since I moved out of New York that sells them. And I, I just, I loved them. Stuff down on 14th Street in which half of the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic output. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature would be places like the Vicos Gorge, the Sami Cave in Cephalonia, the Siri E. Kalter Blue Eyed Spring, Volcanic Rocks of Lemnos, Neda Waterfalls, Tozar Hot Springs, and so much more. In a nutshell, Greece is like a rocky, rugged, seafaring realm of merchant ships and olives. Could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. I feel like that you could also use that to describe Italy. Don't get mad at me. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, on to the next. I keep uh, interrupting. Chips and olives. Could have said that like three Army. minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. Well, on to the next. Winston Churchill once said, Greeks Winston. don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight like Greeks. Okay. First of all, what? Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country at about 93% are made up of ethnic Greeks and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. They use the type C and F plug outlets, they ah. use the Euro as their currency, although prior to the Euro they used the drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, coins. Michael, if you're watching, what kind drachma, of coins are these? The you coin expert. Is that uh, Leonidas? Was Leonidas a real person, or was that just made up for 300? Yeah, 300 isn't accurate, whatever. I still think it's a cool movie, okay? I know it's just a bunch of, like, blah, 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 and they turn the Persians into whatever, but I think 300's a cool movie, okay? So, whatever. It's an okay. Except the weird, like, ugly people in robes, like, Touching virgins to make a prophecy or something. I paraphrased. Anyways. Oldest consist plug outlets, they use the euro as their currency, although prior to the euro they used the drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, pretty much anyone that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain in detail, but in the quickest way I can put this, Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this, Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire, <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he's no, not yes, Greek. He, well, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? He... Then there was classical Greek. Was he from the territory of modern day North Macedonia, which by the way. Dude, he came in and did this. Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> I l this is one of my favorite flags in the world. This one, like better than, than the, I, look, I love America, but I, I, I don't think our flag is that visually appealing, to be honest. Um. There it is right there. Oh my god. But that's what happens. Um, but I love the the red and yellow colors. This one, Spain's flag is great. Kenya's flag is awesome. Nepal's flag, just because it's really unique. Sorry, I'm getting off topic. Oh, but like was Alexander the Great from modern day area of North Macedonia? Or was he from, I've seen a lot of videos for Alexander the Great, I should know this. Or was he from an area that is within the boundaries of current, current uh, present day Greece? <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, well, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? He, then there was I want to go to the gym with this guy. I want to go to the gym what? with this man. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, well, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? He, then there was classical Greece, Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece, Ottoman Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of... Uh, I... Ioannis Cappadistrius. 
Greece that we have today. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and Alexandria. it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so widespread that today almost every language in Europe invokes some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary. Question. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that, but Greek has in one way or another been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language in the world. Oh, question, question, question. So isn't Greek the only reason we know what Egyptian hieroglyphs mean? Because wasn't the Rosetta Stone only, wasn't the like the only way we were able to interpret ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs because the Rosetta Stone had a Greek to Egyptian like uh, translation? Isn't that right? Am I right there? And the Shang Dynasty. And eh, moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Ah! Well, that'll take too nice. long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like many other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek Geography peeps, or as I like to call you, Geography Greeks, have told me that the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. Big families with strong opinionated parents. My mom and sister back in the day love that video. That Greek movie. family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. Big families with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to. There's always like a weird grandma mumbling something about the Turks, and one of the cousins is probably <laughs> lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight. But when grandma brings in the souvlaki Sounds and Italian. moussaka, everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful, warm Norman Rockwell painting. At least that's the picture you Geogra Greeks have painted for me. I don't know, how was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, in Greece, voting is required by law, as is conscription for men ages 16. Yeah, that's right. 16, they get him. I find that so strange. So you have to vote? So is that a democracy or not a democracy? I don't, I mean, to each their own, who am I to judge someone else? I'm not trying to say, oh, let people not vote. That I'm not in the judging. I'm just like, wh what's wrong with just not voting? I, Maybe it reduces the chance of fraudulent, fraudulent voting. I'm open. I'm not trying to judge. And while they're young, up to 45 for a minimum of nine months in service. Many people celebrate name day instead of their birthdays in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from. Land is kind of limited, so to save space, many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried, and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes are incredibly rare. Is that how long it takes five years to go from like fleshy corpse to to skeleton as most Greek grandparents are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes are incredibly rare as most Greek grandparents typically end up living in their children's homes. Traditional music can be found everywhere. You'll probably hear a lot of lutes, mandolins, and tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys smoking while playing backgammon. There's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the offensive mutsa hands. By the way, backgammon, I heard, is super, super, super old. Like, super old. Like, maybe even, like, a thousand years old or something like that. And just like we studied in the Estonia episode, Greece has an influx of women. Like, a lot. Somewhere around 60-65% of the population is female. This Lucky bad. May or may not be the reason why Greece is also the world's most... How can I put this in a non-crude and vulgar phrasing for our children viewers? Uh, Greece is the L libido? most... Hey, hey, active country in the world. They even beat Brazil. Brazil. Libido driven. Enough, Greece also has the lowest divorce rate in the EU as well. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell. Okay, this was five years ago. I heard recently, right? So this is in uh, 2018. It's 2023 now. I heard Greece is like really on the up and up. Like, um, they're doing much, much, much better than, than five years ago.
Let me know if I'm wrong, but I remember hearing that, like, on the news. Back in 2000. When Greece joined the EU. Long story short, they misrepresented their financial statements. They entered an IMF and ECB memorandum. And now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, Classic. back in my day. Yeah, back in your day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the EU as well, with nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs. Nonetheless, as depressing as that sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Now, before we. That, by the way, guys. People say, like, happiness index. It, like, it, it, there's this stat called, like, that. I know I'm talking again. Oh, what a beast. Spartans. The one, I think the greatest thing about Greece, or one of the greatest things about Greece, is that, like, your history, Spartans in particular, is synonymous with the most badass warriors of all time. Except maybe, like, the Imperial Japanese or something ruthless. But they also, the Nang Kings. So. But yeah, like you have Spartans where everyone knows who Spartans are and everyone knows Spartans are badass as hell. So. Before we move on, here are some rapid fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Inventions like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction levers, catapults, a crude steam engine, screw, central heating, and technically the first robot. Concepts like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various fields of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable Greeks would probably Question. include Eratosthenes, Leonidas, Pericles. Is Herodotus Greek? Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also... Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't Alexander. say it. Alexander. No. The great. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. I'm gonna... He's a cheater, okay? There's this not. Not in, not in warfare, I'm saying. He was a brilliant military tactician, obviously. But in the, the something not, where, like, there was this not in this place, in this city, where Alexander the Great eventually went to in his conquest, and it's like anyone who can untie this knot uh, is something. I don't know. Is going to have like success or is like godly or, or something like that. And it's just like, uh, like he does the, you know, the Indiana Jones series, the scene where like Harrison Ford is like getting ready to fight this big uh, like Arabian, like or, or, or what, something guy with a giant sword and, and Harrison Ford just goes and shoots him. Well, Essentially, Alexander the Great just took his sword to the knot and just, like, chopped it and said, Hey, that's against the rules, man. Sorry. He is, yeah, he is Greek. Greek. Yes, he, he is. is. Modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiodori, who taught Einstein, singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yep. Ooh, she was pretty. Karathiodori, who taught Einstein, singer... Pretty. Here, Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Yanni, soccer players, Giorgio Samaras, Giorgios Karayunis, Konstantinos Mitroglu. This crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days. Queen Sophia of Sp What is that, like... 90... Two miles a day? Or Spain, of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. John Stamos is Greek? Gorgeous, man. He aged so well. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. Greece is really old. Like, whoa, really old. They've planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell, though, they generally get along pretty well with other Orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Orthodox. Of those Orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to... I'd imagine they're not great friends, obviously, with Turkey. Probably not great friends with Albania, and probably not great friends with Bulgaria. Just because of Bulgaria trying to take, like, Thessaloniki and a lot of stuff, World War One or pre-World War One, And then Albanians, I know, are like a majority, I believe, Muslim country in the Balkans. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Turkey, they have a lot of disputes with... Um, 
have to be orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean and seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan Armenia. The exotic una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since, since like the third century AD. I mean, Armenia borders. Does Armenia border the uh, Black Sea? Okay, they don't, but is it like their mutual dislike of, of Turks or something like that? Interesting. I have the hiccups, great. Turkey is kind of like already the almost Turkey. over. Holy moly, that was quick. Kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because you know Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no-no. When it Question. comes to the uh, do a lot of Greeks know Turkish, and do a lot of Turkish know Greek? My God, best friend, though, was... almost every geographer Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as a separate country, but rather just the an Narwhal. extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything for them. In conclusion, modern-day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is, today, you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape, or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. And by the way, kudos is a Greek word. Stay tuned. Grenada is coming up next. Greece has no reason to uh, feel, or they have a lot of reasons to be proud for thousands of years of history. Awesome video. Love this guy. Love the whole channel. I'm hiccuping. I need to go drink water to get rid of it before I get too angry. Love you guys. See you guys next time. Uh, another one coming up soon. And bye. See you guys.